Hey, thanks for tuning in. It's Wang and Bang. This futuristic looking weapon is the Benjamin Airbow. It's an air gun that shoots an arrow at 450 feet per second. It's not what this video is about, but it's why I'm making this video. There are lots of great broadheads that'll fly super fast, but they do that by being really small. And to me, I think that's a huge waste of the kinetic energy that something like the Airbow or many of the fastest crossbows generate. When I found out about the SWAT Broadheads A4, I thought maybe I have a solution. It's a four blade expandable that combines two different styles of opening so you get a really good entrance hole and a really good exit hole. It also has as close to field tip flight as any head that I have tested. And that's why the SWAT Broadheads A4 is what's coming up next on Twang and Bang. The SWAT and SWAT Broadhead stands for Superior Whitetail Assassin Technology, and this is their A4 Expandable. It looks like a marriage between two popular blade designs, and that might be correct on the surface, but there's a lot more that makes the A4 what it is than just the way the blades open. The cut on contact tip is called the X-Out, made of stainless steel blades that cut a path for the ferrule through flesh and bone. The ferrule is machined 7075 aluminum, which is almost twice as strong as the 6061 aluminum used in other broadheads. Its parabolic shape is key to its flight, which so far has been successfully tested at 400 feet per second both on targets and on game. Held in place by a band are two slip lock blades that open on impact and two rear swing blades that open after the head fully penetrates the rib cage of a game animal. The slip lock blades will cut an entry wound two inches across or greater, and the rear swing blades cut a one and three quarter inch path once open. All the while, the X out blades are cutting their own paths as they are opposed rather than aligned with the deployed blades. Now it's open, how do we close it back up without cutting ourselves or cutting the band? It's actually not that hard, you just have to know how to do it. You lift the front blade, push it towards the ferrule, and that unlocks it. That's not gonna happen on the way through an animal. So those are closed. And of course the rear blades, they just flip up. All right, so now we're gonna take a band, we're gonna roll it right onto one of the arms from the front blade. I made a little tool out of a paper clip you can do this with your fingers, but I found that this is easier, especially on camera, and this is still gonna be at an awkward angle on camera here. But you hook the band and you loop it around all the blades, trying not to, to nick it, and there we go. Uh, I didn't roll it over any of these blades up here, and there's actually a little notch here and here on the rear blades that hold it in place, and these, are tight. That blade, that band might not look like much, but it can handle a whole lot of force, which you are about to see. I've got a number of tests I'm going to do with the A4, but first is a flight test at 25 yards. This Hickory Creek mini inline Beautiful. crossbow shoots around 325 feet per second and is zeroed for field points. It's cold. This target is really rough. I'm having to do a, a new head every time I'm shooting. Uh, but that, that's all I need to see. These are flying fantastic. Probably the best, best flight for point of impact between a field tip and any broadhead I've tested so far. Love it. You can see actually, after pulling this, this went in that target and after pulling it out, the, the blades, these are closed again. And these are swung forward past 90 degrees. So. There's no way that's a barbed head at all. Those fold forward and these go, when, you, when they're pulled out of target, animal, whatever, these go past 90 degrees. These are angled about like that, the back edge. So these are not barbed heads. Next up is my Benjamin Airbow, an air gun that shoots arrows at 450 feet per second. Okay, so I only have a few of these heads to test and this has already been shot into the rhino block looks really straight and part of it is that 7075 aluminum didn't have problem with a really hard foam target and the blades I wouldn't expect them to be straight pulling out but they look okay let's see how this goes I will be blown away if this flies at 450 feet per second they don't say it will but I don't care I'm going to test it anyway I want to see 
Nice! Oh man, can you believe that? It flew. It's uh, about within an inch and a half of where this is zeroed. And I, I could dial that in. That's 450 feet per second. The only other heads that I could get to fly at this speed that I've tried are Ramcats, which I, I also love. But this is gonna give me, instead of one and a quarter inch three blade cut, this is two inches across one side, an inch and three quarters on the other side, four, four blades. That head was through that Reinhard target twice now, once at 325 feet per second and once at 450 feet per second. And it's still straight. I have to pick some foam out. It's still straight. Uh, the You want to know how I know that the blades opened up? This happens with a lot of blades that, that fold back. You can see there's just a little notch in the collar right there. But what I like is it didn't make it into the shaft. Because some, some of the heads that lay back like that, uh, they'll, they'll actually get into the shaft. And you can even see how this is angled right there to help keep that from happening. So my shaft is fine. This head is fine to shoot again. I, I'm really excited about this. I've been wanting a head like this for a long time. Let's see what those four blades do to hide and gel. All right, so it's always a little tricky shooting in this close because of offset. I'm gonna aim a little high, seems backwards, but that's actually when you have a scope like this, what you have to do. Let's see where this goes. Beautiful. I can see the cuts from here. Wow, it sliced right through the hide and it and it moved the block. Let's let's take a look at that up close. Woohoo! It's breezy out here. It's a cold day to be doing this test, but I had the block inside up until this time and and you can see right there. Look at that gaping hole. This is actually an old broadhead test right there, but you can you can tell the difference. That's a good size wound. And what happened is the broadhead entered there and it just it just skipped out of the wound channel. But there's two blade gigantic entrance hole. And then you can see that all four blades are deployed. I'm gonna flip this over. That's that's great. That's, you know, it's, it's what you'd expect. That it opened up nice big slices all the way through. And uh, that's a dead deer. It doesn't even need four blades. Two, two blades two inches across is going to kill a deer. And the penetration, that's, this is uh, gel that's just designed for bullets. It, you can shoot arrows in it, but it grabs onto the shaft in a live animal this is going to be all lubed up by stuff on the inside of an animal it's just going to keep on going through i want to see what happens when you hit this with this broadhead going 450 feet per second let's do that next oh nice okay so once again, look at, look at that. That's fantastic. That is gonna be a great blood trail. And you can even see vertical cuts here and here. Big, big wound channel from there to there on the entrance, on the entrance. And then right here, Boy, it's very faint. I can see, I, I, I can see it in a viewfinder, but you can see right here is where the secondary blades blow open. And you've got 
just two inches into the gel and it's already fully open all the way through the gel and it stayed open all the way through the back. There's one cut. There's a second cut. There is the third cut right in there and then the fourth one is this slice right here. So, and that goes, it starts right here, two inches in the block, two inches in the block, you have all four blades opened up. That's at 450 feet per second. There's, there's no worry about a bow being too fast for these blades to open up inside of an animal, which can happen with some expandables. But it flies very much like a field point and it's going to perform in game. Oh, we got one more test to do. We're going to shoot it through some OSB to see what happens if you hit some bone. <laughs> this is crazy. This is my new hunting broadhead, no doubt. I don't think this is going to have any problems blowing right through this. If blades break off, that's... I've killed so many deer with, with heads that the blades will break off if you send them through OSB like this. But they tell me this shouldn't be a problem. Let's find out. Well, the arrow's straight into the target. That's a good sign. Let's go get a closer look. <laughs> I can actually see it cut. Let me, let me adjust the light here. Oh, that's as good as I can get. But it, uh, that's the start of the blade. It opened up, blade opened up, cut through the OSB, and you can see the vein is actually in the OSB right there. Let's see the other side. Blew right through it, and uh, <laughs> look at that. It's opened. Cut across that way, cut across that way. Oop. That's, that's not fully open right there. That might have broken off or just closed after it came through the OSB. But well, you can see straight across there and all the way that far. So you got at least three out of the four blades open when it hits the target face. Let's pull this out and see what the head looks like. So that's an inch and three quarters across right there. That's, that's after actually one of the blades broke off in the target as it was getting pulled out of the target. So three of them were still intact going into the target. But it doesn't matter if, if two blades broke off, you still have an inch and three quarter two blade after it blows through like a deer shoulder or a pork shoulder blade, no problem, no problem. I've killed countless deer with heads that w the, all the blades would break off on this kind of test. That's fantastic for, for 450 feet per second into half inch OSB. And I could probably shoot this again as a two blade head. That's, that's my new head right there. That's Scorpion, my air bow, shooting an air bolt out of the dragon claw. This is what you want right here. Okay, so that's, that's a lot to ask. That was 450 feet per second. And let's see what happens to those blades. That's something a little more reasonable. This is 325 feet per second. Even though I was happy with that. I <laughs> love that sound. Just thunk and it's, it's straight so no problems blowing through it. Let's take a look. <laughs> oh, I made a hole. Let's see if I could get light through that. There you go. You can see the hole through the OSB. And uh, got to get my slow mo camera out of the way here. And uh, yeah, again, no issues. And I could see one, two, three. All four blades deployed, 
Okay, all four deployed and there's barely any bending at all. So that's at 325 and it actually opened on the way through the, the OSB. So at most reasonable bow speeds, you're gonna be able to blow right through a deer or pork shoulder and have all four blades go right on through but I'm going to be shooting it at 450 anyway. <laughs> this is a great head. This is one of my favorite tests. Again, I just offset. It's really hard to, to figure out. Let's see. Let's hope this works. Perfect shot right through the ribs. <laughs> Woo. I can see it leaking from here. Oh, that's so much fun. <laughs> I love this test. It cracked that rib right there. Came through and all, all four blades deployed. Fantastic, man. <laughs> 450 feet per second. I keep saying that, but I have been wanting a blade, a broadhead that was going to be able to handle my airbow, my Scorpid Extremes anything new that might be coming out that's not wasting so much of the kinetic energy. And this is it. Fantastic. Well, <laughs> there you go. The A4 is a big leap for me in what a broadhead can do both in the air and in tissue. It's the first broadhead I've ever tested that has flown exactly point of impact with my field points at 325 feet per second out of something like my mini inline crossbow and its point of impact was as close to field points out of my air bow as any other broadhead I've tested including Ramcats which I still love by the way. The two styles of blade opening I think is really clever because they open really fast even at 450 feet per second you're getting a massive entry slit and of course it blows all the way open within two inches even at that speed. There are plenty of expandables that are almost halfway through a game animal before fully opening even at slower speeds but that's just not a concern with the A4 not not for me. In fact it's been available since July of last year so there are plenty of regular customers that have already taken deer and hogs and I cannot wait to add my name to that list. If you want to learn more about the SWAT Broadheads A4, be sure to click the link in the video description below. Be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. You can see the links right here. And be sure to click right here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.